January, February, almost two months into the 2024 and I was getting lots of requests that where is your latest data engineering roadmap for the 2024 and I was like yes your demand is completely valid so why not to prepare a dedicated data engineering roadmap for 2024. I have already created extensive data engineering roadmap videos on my channel which you might have followed. So I wanted to do something different this time and that is the reason today I will talk about a basic to advanced data engineering roadmap for 2024. This roadmap will consist the basic and most common data engineering tool and tech stack plus the advanced part as well. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner or you are planning a 10 years of journey in data engineering. This is the solid roadmap which you should follow consistently and thoroughly and without any doubt if you don't know even about data engineering this sequential roadmap is a deal breaker for you. Now your question would be how much time is required to complete this roadmap then my answer is totally depends on you. If you are following it consistently and thoroughly then 5-6 months are more than enough but if you are not able to follow it then it may take more time as well. So this time I am not going to force anyone that you need to do it in this month, this month, this month. Take your time but complete it thoroughly and consistently. And one thing I can definitely assure you again, even if you are able to complete 65 to 70% of the thing mentioned in this roadmap, then no one can stop you to become a top notch data engineer. So let's get into this video and let me explain you that detailed roadmap. And before that quickly smash the like button in the big numbers and share this roadmap video with your aspiring data engineer friends and colleagues so that they can also prepare. Alright, so here is your basic to advanced data engineering roadmap for 2024. So it is maintained in a proper sequence. So we will follow the same as well. That's why it's a basic to advanced. So very first thing, the programming part. So in data engineering, you can primarily focus on these three programming languages, Python, Java, Scala. And my recommendation would be Python again because it is easy to adapt and it will be used in your data analytics skills and even if you plan to move into the data science or the ETL or BI engineer. So Python has more and more opportunity that's what I can say. But data engineering core data engineering implementation you will get opportunities to implement in the Scala in the Java as well. So any one of it will definitely work out. And in order to crack good companies with good packages as I have mentioned previously that problem solving skills and data structures algorithm will be also very important. But the good part is you don't need to focus on the hard level of DSA questions like the graphs and the heaps and uh, tree questions that implementation that is not needed so only focus on easy to medium level of question pick up anything like lead code neat code hacker rank just shortlist the easy medium question and start practicing it. So arrays, string, searching, sorting, stack, queues, hashing, prime numbers, basics of dynamic programmings. This is something which you need to focus on and apart from that if your primary language is Python then make sure to cover the data structures of Python itself like the list, tuple, dictionary, order, dictionary, set. Try to solve as many as questions around these data structures. And before moving on to the next topic, I want to share a very very important announcement that I have launched the AWS Data Engineering Bootcamp and that will be the very first batch of it. And for that one you can visit www.growdataskills.com or you can check out the enrollment link given in the description and right now early bird offer is also going on and very important part this bootcamp will be only for very limited number of people hence you have to enroll yourself very very fast before all the seats are full. So we will cover this AWS data engineering bootcamp in 1.5 months where you will be learning everything about it in the live classes directly from me and I will be teaching it and the live classes are starting from the 2nd of March. And after the live classes there will be dedicated live doubt clearing session as well and also private discord community where you will be asking your doubt and I will be resolving them personally. So what is there for you in this AWS data engineering bootcamp? So this is focused to the AWS tech stack means as a data engineer if you are using AWS then what all important AWS services you will be using in order to create scalable data pipelines. So all those services we will be covering from the scratch so if you know just basics of data engineering even like Python, SQL and Spark 
then this is the bootcamp for you where you can get a good proficiency in the AWS tech stack and you can increase your chances to crack more and more good job opportunities. So we will learn all those services one by one, implement it practically with assignments, quizzes, interview questions. And after that, we will be working on more than five plus industry level projects. And this is not it. I will be personally helping you all in your resume building, interview strategies and the LinkedIn profile building and whatever possibilities for the placement assistance. We keep on helping all our students and we will keep on doing it. So if this is something which excites you, then this affordable, super affordable, I would say bootcamp is designed for you. Hurry up, enroll right now. Link is given in the description. Leverage the early bird offer as well. And in Grow Data Skills, you all know that we don't do any kind of fake promises of job guarantees or any kind of scams. It is pure upskilling. If you want to learn the industry level things, then do it right now. And apart from that, if you are interested in any other kind of skill set, like the data analyst, ATL, the data science, machine learning, then we have the live bootcamps and the self-paced bootcamp for the same as well. You can check it out on the www.growdataskills.com and the success stories on your screen says a lot about our platform and the quality of content and the passion we have for upskilling the upcoming generation of data professionals and our students are just banging this data industry with good job opportunities and good salary packages. So this is the motivation for you. Now coming to the IDs which you will keep on using like on your day to day activities while coding the things, creating the pipelines. So focus on these things as well where Jupyter Notebook is going to be very much important in most of the companies you will see that Jupyter Notebook is getting used for your Spark application and for other analytics stuff. But apart from that, you should be good with these type of IDs like Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, IntelliJ and Jupyter Notebook as I said. Then the basics of Linux command and shell scripting because as a data engineer, most of the times you might be working on the server side as well like just logging there and doing some sort of scripting automation running the commands to see the data size and some uh, initial data analysis by looking at the number of records and many other important parts which can be done with the basic Linux commands and that shell scripting. So you should be very, very good with that one. Don't need to be mastered into it, but that basic easy range is also good enough. Now the DBMS concepts means database management system. This is going to be a backbone for this entire ecosystem, be it data engineering, analyst, data science, you will be primarily interacting with the databases here and there. It could be a transactional, no SQL. So that DBMS concept becomes very, very much important. Sometimes people, uh, what they do, they directly jump on the uh, SQL part, just start practicing SQL queries, etc. But they don't focus on these DBMS concepts. And that is the reason they lack in the core knowledge of these transactional databases and no SQLs and that will hamper your design interviews because there you need to put these type of uh, scenarios and you need to use these type of concepts so that you can give an appropriate answer. So DBMS concepts like working with the transactional databases, ACID properties, transactions, concurrency control, ER diagram, indexing, data normalization, data denormalization. These are the core things which you should definitely know and you should be aware of. Next, the databases. So here two things, the transactional databases in order to handle your real time data and where the insert update deletes, these kind of things are happening very quickly and you want your data to be in the normalized form. Then transactional databases, which are most common in the industry and you will see in most of the job descriptions like MySQL and Postgres. Next is the no SQL databases. So if you are starting your data engineering journey, then if you are focusing on Cassandra and MongoDB, that would be good enough. Later on in different products, you may encounter different, different type of databases as well. But this is a good starting point. Now coming to the bread and butter for every data professional, that is SQL. So that is also going to be very important for the uh, data engineers. So sometimes what we think as a data engineer, we only write codes, Spark applications, etc. Then what is the use of SQL? That is a myth. SQL is super, super important for you. At least 30, 35% weightage in your interviews and in your day-to-day -day job activities. 
so topics like all type of joins you should be very proficient with uh, writing all such type of queries complex questions will be given where clause order by group by and having clause case when statement case when statement with group by sub queries nested queries correlated queries then in not in any all exist not exist aggregation functions date related functions very important common table expression super super important iterative recursive then views how to create the views materialized views that is also important and then this is super super important the window functions so over clause partition by order by these type of uh, aggregation window functions then row number rank dense rank lead lag nth value frame clause like range between rows between these are the hard core topics of sql which you should know and not the theory part of it but solving the complex queries around these topics now the next core big data and distributed computation frameworks right so here you need to focus on hadoop and hive this should be your starting point then scoop basically to move data from the mysql to hdfs and vice versa and then spark which is has which has become the mandatory skill set for the data engineering thing so spark because it will be able to solve your batch processing and spark streaming related thing and then flink and apache beam for core uh, you can say stream related processing so real time data processing so these will be the core frameworks which i would recommend to focus on and then databricks as a platform which is built on top of spark and widely used in the industry for all type of data pipelines manage workflows and many other things so make sure to focus on all those things next is the messaging queues because whenever uh, you work on a streaming type of data then you should know any kind of messaging queue if you are working on cloud we will discuss about that part as well but when it comes to the most popular messaging queue that is apache kafka in your distributed computation and streaming type of processing so make sure you are very proficient in uh, apache kafka for better opportunities and i remember my expedia interview as well where in one single round they grilled me uh, on this apache kafka related concept so make sure you are good at it next is the uh, orchestrations like when you create the data pipelines how to create that workflow dependency management so you should be very good with the workflow managers and the orchestration tools most popular like the apache airflow but i have also used open source as gaban as well but mostly in companies you will see the apache airflow now data warehousing which is going to be very important for all the mid senior and beyond that one because in your interview rounds there will be a dedicated round for a data modeling and data warehousing so you should be good with the basic fundamentals and concepts of data warehousing like snowflake schema star schema how to build that dimension fact tables and many other core concepts apart from that those type of data warehouses which are widely used in the industry and i have listed down them first is hive then snowflake very demanding in the industry aws redshift gcp bigquery so these are very popular data warehousing services widely used in the different companies and in the industry so make sure to focus on these ones then these are the things which i was talking for the advanced part like the file management system or storage layers the data lakes where we are able to write the data in the real time and those uh, data lakes which are supporting the acid properties those storage systems where we can do all these type of uh, operations like the updates with delete and those type of lookups then these type of file management system becomes very important and in last couple of years i have been working on these things as well and i can say that these are just awesome so delta lake in recent time it has become very popular on the other hand apache hoodie as well apache iceberg so make sure to get a good knowledge about it that how these uh, management system actually works and how you can leverage them for these type of uh, implementations next is the ci cd which is the again very important part when you develop the pipeline and when you talk about the production grade system then ci cd becomes very important because everything will be completely automated as soon as you check in your code in the github and till the final deployment in the production servers you need that entire automation so here ci cd is going to be very important so github github actions jenkins spinnaker docker kubernetes these type of things will play a vital role and these are the super advanced things which are nowadays asked by different companies in the interviews and you will see these things mentioned in there 
job descriptions as well. So make sure to get a good grasp on it. Next is the cloud platform. Uh, so for your journey, you can start with any one of it. There is no mandate thing that you need to start with Azure only, AWS only or GCP. Whatever you find easy to start with, just get started. So here AWS, Azure and GCP. So I have listed down all these important services. This Cloud platforms have provided enormous amount of services, but as a data engineer, what you will be using very frequently to build scalable data pipelines, that is something which you will find here. So you can start your journey with any cloud platform and then switching to next one will be also very, very easy. Then alerting and monitoring. This is very important because when you talk about production grade pipelines, you cannot tolerate the downtime and by any chance your pipelines are failing and you don't have any idea about it means you are going to lose a lot of things. Hence alerting monitoring plays very important role for a, for any kind of scalable applications and well managed application. So frameworks and deep platforms like Datadog, Splunk, Grafana, Kibana, PagerDuty, these are the things which will come and which will help you for all these alerting and monitoring related setup. Then as a bonus, what you can do nowadays, many companies are switching to low code ETL platforms as well, or here and there they are using it. So anyhow, you can start focusing uh, any of these uh, low code ETL platforms where DBT is something which you will see most of the companies are highlighting. And apart from that, Informatica uh, is also there. Tailend is also there, but you can focus more on these like Prophecy, Airbyte, Fibtran, Mage, Detorios, S3, these are the low code util platforms, which will give you an extra edge on top of other candidates. If you have a good idea about even few of them next last, but not the least. And I won't say this is only for the data engineers. This is for every professional working in the IT industry time to time. These soft skills and leadership skills are very much important when you grow in your journey. So things which are related to your communication and collaboration. You should definitely be aware of those type of uh, tools. Let's say for an example, Zira, how to just create those story points and uh, then how to work on the sprint agile methodology and how to use Zira confluence for the documentation team collaboration. This is something which is a kind of bond you should have within your team and the communication, how to interact with your upstream teams, downstream teams, the leadership, all those things should be very, very top notch if you want to grow exponentially in any of the profession, not just data engineering. So that's it for today's video. If you found it very, very informative, then make sure to share this video with your fellow aspiring data engineer friends and colleagues and like this video in the big numbers. And if you are new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button as well. Plus, let me know in the comment section what all things and what all skills you already know. And don't forget to enroll yourself in the AWS Data Engineering Bootcamp. The link has been given in the description. The early bird offer is also going on and there are very, very limited seats. So if you want to learn that AWS Data Engineering from basic and want to implement the projects from the scratch, then you should definitely enroll yourself in that bootcamp. You can visit www.growdataskills.com or you can check out the link given in the description. So hurry up. I will see you all in the live classes. Till then, just keep exploring data.